Hey everyone, in this video, I'm going to show you how to deploy Data Factory using Link to ARM templates. Now, why would you need to do this? Let's give an example of the error you might see is I have an Azure pipeline here where what I'm trying to do is deploy my dev data factory. So package up all my pipelines, link services, and deploy it to a UAT data factory. And if you see here, I'm getting this issue when I try to deploy it to UAT that the request content exceeds the maximum size of four megabytes. So what's going on here? If you see here in my artifact, again, that's that package up data factory code in this ARM template for factory, which is again, the package up pipelines, link services and everything, you see on my size here is 30 megabytes. So if your size is over four megabytes, when you have a larger data factory, when you try to deploy it to UAT, you're gonna see something like this. So I'm trying to deploy this again to my UAT data factory, that, that ARM template, that's like the 30 megabyte one. And you see, I get this error saying it's exceeds size over four megabytes. So in this video, I'm gonna go into why this is happening, what's going on, and then I'm gonna show you the kind of suggested way that Data Factory recommends to deploy ADF using linked ARM templates. And I'm actually gonna show you a new way that I've developed that's, I believe, more secure and easier um, to deploy all these things and, and fix this error for you. Um, so without further ado, let's get started. All right, now before we go into more about what the error is and how to fix it, I assume in this video, you already know how to deploy Data Factory the normal way. You've watched this video on how to deploy Data Factory the CI/CD way to a UAT and prod environment, for example, and you're familiar with this code in here with the CI/CD pipeline and everything, how to package up and deploy your data factory. If you're not, I will link the video and code in the description below here. Definitely check those out before going into this video. That being said, why is this error happening? Right, it's because your Azure Resource Manager ARM, for short, template is over four megabytes in size. So ARM templates, which again is just your a JSON file that packages up all of your data factory codes, like your pipelines, link services, all into a JSON file is over four megabytes. If we go back into our pipeline, if I go into this uh, artifact, you'll see that this ARM template is 30 megabytes, so well over the four megabyte size. So that's why it's failing. Now, there's also other uh, limits to be aware of for ARM templates. You can't have more than like 260 parameters and some other ones here, but usually for data factory, it's usually this four megabyte issue that you're going to get. Now, how to tell if your data factory is over four megabytes. There's two main ways to do it. The first one is I just showed you. Uh, when you try to deploy, it'll show it in the size here. The other way to do it is you can go into your data factory. And if you see, I have a thousand pipelines here. They're all just a bunch of weight activities. And if you want to actually test this in your own environment, I have a code that will automatically deploy a data factory with over a thousand pipelines here to get you to this. So you can actually test this new approach. Then you go to the manage tab and click on ARM template, click on export ARM template. And the larger your data factory is, the longer this could possibly take. But when it actually finishes, you'll get something like this in your downloads folder. It'll have this ARM template zip right click on it, hit extract all, and then select where you want it to extract that. Then it says you'll get something like this, where it'll break up different stuff here. And when you go into the folder, like for example here, it'll give you your ARM template for factory. Now this is a, a smaller one, but if you go into some of the larger ones, like here, this is 30,000. So this is gonna be over you know, 30 megabytes. So if you see something, anything over 4,000 uh, kilobytes, then you're probably gonna have that issue. Now, how does Data Factory currently recommend how to do it? So the current way Data Factory recommends is this, in this Data Factory documentation, which again, I'll link in the description. They currently say, you gotta find those link templates. So what are these link templates? So if we go back to our artifact, whenever you build a Data Factory, automatically Data Factory also creates this folder called link templates. And if we go down here, essentially what these 0, 1, right up to 50 here, what these files are essentially just link templates. So this is this ARM template for factory file, 30 megabyte file, broken down. So they break down this large file into these smaller files. So all these like up to 50 files, because it's a lot smaller than the 30 megabytes. And if you see all the way at the bottom here, you do this ARM template master file. And if we go into this, this is just gonna package up all of our 50 files or however many you have. So for example, you'll see in this resources section, it has the ARM template zero, ARM template one, and so on. So it's gonna say package up all these files into this master template file and then deploy it. Now, if you also see, you also get this parameters file. This is a little bit different than your main uh, parameter file that's below. So if you see, you have these two additional parameters called container URI and SAS token, which I'll get into in just a second about why these are there. But if you go into our regular ARM template parameter file, you'll see that we don't have those. So now, What's the current step? How does Data Factory recommend to do this? If you go down and let me click on this piece, we're actually deploying these link templates. It goes through a number of steps, create a storage account, create a container. To summarize what all these things are, I've actually summarized it here. And this is essentially what the current approach is. 
you first have to create a storage account and the storage account has to have public access enabled. And I'll go over why and what some of the challenges and security challenges are. And then my new approach for actually de deploying this, that's a lot more secure, but just to show you the original approach right now, right? You have to, you can't have this behind a firewall. It has to be public access enabled for this storage account. And then you have to copy those link template files, which are again, like essentially this folder, all these files in this folder to that storage account. And then this is all in your pipeline code. And then you have to create a SAS, a shared access signature token on that storage account and set the expiration timestamp. If you go into my storage account, under networking and security, you have this shared access signature. Now what this gives restricted access to your storage account. So for example, I can say, let's say I want to give access to my friend. I say, hey, you're not in my Azure tenant, but I want you to be able to access this storage account and see those files. So I could say, hey, in this storage account, I'm only going to give you access to the blob container, the blob endpoint, and I'll give you access to get whatever the resource types. And then you can do read, write, delete. There's different permissions you can set on that. Then if you see, I, I select a timestamp. So I say, okay, this it's going to be a SAS token, what it's called. It's just going to be a string. But it's going to be available from July 13th at 9.39 a.m. to 5 p.m. That means that this token that I'm going to generate for, to, to be able to access this storage account is going to be good for these eight hours. Now you can secure this a little bit more with HTTPS, like more secure protocol, whitelist some IPs here. But then when I generate this, it gives me this SAS token, which is just a, a, a long string. So my friend could then access the storage account. Now, what you also have to do then is that, that SAS token, you either have to put it as a pipeline secret, so like a secret variable on your Azure pipeline, or store it in a key vault secret and then connect it to your pipeline. And then you have to add the token or key vault secret and the storage account information to your Azure pipeline deployment task so that the Azure Resource Manager service can then use it to deploy those link templates. So then I can go grab and so I can go grab those 50 files, that master template that I just showed you, and then deploy it to your UAT and prod data factories. Then either either then have to either delete the storage account or just wait for the SAS token to expire. Now what are some of the challenges? First, the storage account has to have public access enabled. You cannot lock it down via firewall. In your storage account here, you go to security and networking. I cannot change the firewall here from enabled all networks. I can't say select eight networks or disable access. The reason this is the, the case is if you see here, I'm in the ARM template documentation. I'm on the securing external template, which I'll link in the description. But essentially what's happening is it says that your link template can be locked down. But you see here, you cannot link to a template in a storage account that's behind an Azure storage firewall. The reason that's the case is because uh, Azure Resource Manager has to have access to be able to get those. And if you can't go through a private endpoint currently, you can't add this firewall. So that's the main reason. Now, what are some other concerns? When you generate these SAS tokens, they don't need to authenticate users. Whoever has that token can use it. So if my friend posts this token online to anyone in the world, anyone can then use this to access the storage account. Your SAS token is also logged in deployment operations, even if it passes a secure string. And there's no way to delete a SAS token once it's been created. So once I create this SAS token and it's good till 5 p.m. today, I can't stop it. So let's say my deployment finished at 9.50. I can't then go and delete this SAS token. It's there until it expires. And then how do you copy your files from your Azure pipeline over to that storage account? Well, if you use the Azure file copy task in the Azure pipeline tasks, it only works on Windows agents. You have to use a different approach like AZCLI commands for Linux or Mac agents. So it's not consistent across all places. Now, with all that being said, I've actually developed a new, more secure way to do this. In this important section, it actually mentions that instead of securing your link templates with a SAS token, consider creating a template spec. The template specs, the main template spec and the link template specs as a resource in your subscription. These are then Azure RBAC secured by default. Now, I haven't seen anything for, from Data Factory of how to do this. So I actually just wrote the code myself, um, which I'm going to show you in this video that I think is way more secure and a lot easier to use. This new approach is using those, that link template spec approach. I'll go into more what template specs are, but essentially the difference is instead of having to do all of this stuff here, all you now need to do is this code that I'm going to show you automatically does this for you. So it deploys your ADF linked ARM templates as template specs. It then creates a new ADF master link template that uses those link template specs and packages them all up. And then it deploys them to your UAT and broad environments. And then you can optionally delete the, link, the, the template specs after deployment. It's all automated. And these template specs are RBAC secured by default. That means that they're not just open to the public. You have to have the template spec reader permission or Azure you know, RBAC permissions to be able to even see 
or look at these templates back. So they're secured by default. Then you can have different versions if you want to separate some of your versions out. And there's no need to copy files to a public Azure storage account or create and retrieve a SaaS token. And these can be used on any agent. Windows, Linux, this one process works for any agent um, that you have. With that being said, uh, I will show you uh, the new code and how this all works. Now let's see how this actually works and how it deploys these four steps here. So if I go to my pipeline, this is one that is using the new approach. Now, if you see, it does the same thing where it packages up your dev data factory, so packages up all that code, and deploys to a UAT data factory, then a production data factory. Now, if you see, there's two artifacts now instead of one. The first one is this ADF artifact, which is the original one that we have, and those link templates. Now, what's going to happen in the actual code, the new code, it's going to take these 50 linked templates, and it's going to deploy them as template specs. In my UAT resource group, you can parameterize this, and I'll show you how to do that in a little bit here. But essentially, it's going to deploy those 50 as template specs. Now, what are template specs? Okay, if I go to this one here, a template spec you can think of as just a resource type in Azure where you can store an ARM template for later deployment. So you can save ARM templates and deploy them at a later time. For example, you could do it with storage accounts, really any Azure resource. Now, we're doing this with the linked templates these template specs. And what's nice about template specs is, for example, let's say you had a storage account and you had another team, let's say your marketing team, wanted to deploy a storage account as well. You could say, I can deploy this for you. Just tell me what resource group you need to deploy it into and it can deploy this exact thing you know, in there. So you can just save and deploy things later. The other thing is you can version these things, you have different versions if you're building stuff on top of it. And then you can also, these things are RBAC secured by default. So in order to be able to actually access these template specs, you need at least the template spec reader role to be able to read this this template spec to so the code inside of it, or to be able to modify it or delete it or anything like that, or greater permissions like owner, contributor, RBAC roles. But they're secured by default, so you don't have to use a SAS token. You can just use this with RBAC, which is really nice and really convenient. So then it's going to package up all these and deploy them exactly as they are, not change them at all. And the next thing it's going to do, it's going to take this ARM template master file. And if you see here now what it's doing, is it's pointing to the current linked template. So ARM template 0.json, uh, ARM template 1, and so forth, up to 50, and deploys these as linked templates. In the new code, what it's going to do, if you see this new artifact, if I open this one up, this instead is going to be updated to point, instead of these linked templates, it's actually going to grab the template specs, the template link, which is all those template specs. And you see it's pointing to that ARM template 0 template spec with this version number, and it's going to package that up. It does that for all 50. And that's it. Then it just deploys it for you automatically. So let's actually dive into the code. And any of the code I show you is going to be in this new repository called Data Factory Link CICD Link Temperature, which I'll put a link in the description. So if you want to get any of the code that I'm showing you in the video, check this out if you want to. Now, we actually jump in. The CICD code is exactly the same thing, except for a couple differences. So again, this is the exact same code. The only thing I changed is I removed the key vault deployment and the approval gates because it's not really needed. And those are extra features. You can always add those back if you want to, but I want to simplify it here. If you go into our CAC pipeline, this is the exact same stuff we did before. It's going to package up your data factory, downloads that ADF artifact, which has those link templates and everything there. This is the first piece that's changed. So this is the Azure CLI task. It's actually going to call this do link template, create deploy PowerShell script. It's going to pass in a couple of parameters. And it's going to be passed in with the folder path to the linked ARM templates. That's that ADF artifact. And that link template folder, again, that's going to be looking for this. It's going to be essentially grabbing all the items in this folder here. And then we're going to deploy the template specs. You can pick the resource group name you want to deploy it to. The resource group location, the version number you can create, and that template spec master name. So you can name this file whatever you want to. And the output folder is going to be just to our root directory here. And we're going to grab that later. Now, these variables, these parameters in this PowerShell script come from these variables that I have defined in this variables file. So again, you have the exact same variables you had before, but I added these four new ones for the link template deployment. So this is the resource group you can choose. So I chose that linked UAT resource group, and that's why they deployed in this resource group here. You can change that for yourself if you wanted to use this code. And the, re the region, the East US region, the version number, and this is going to be that new ARM template master name. That's why it was named all the way down here as this. You can name that whatever you want to. And that's it. Same thing when you call UAT. Again, you pass the exact same stuff that you're using. And same thing with prod, the exact same 
variables there. It's going to use them for all of them. Now, let's actually jump into this. So the first thing it's going to do, this PowerShell script, is just what I said. So you pass in those parameters like I just showed you in that arguments in that task. It's going to grab all those 50 ARM templates from that linked template folder. It's going to deploy them as template specs. That's it. And the second piece is going to read in your original ARM template master JSON file, and then it's going to remove that container URI and SAS token parameters from the file because these aren't needed anymore because we're not using SAS tokens anymore. Um, we're using the template specs. And then what's going to do is for each resource, and again, each resource means each linked template. So like ARM template zero, template one, two, three, four, five, and so on. Instead, though, of using the link template, it's actually going to grab and retrieve the resource ID of the template spec. What's going to be doing, it's going into the template spec and it goes into this properties. It's going to grab the ID of the template spec to define the exact path of this template spec. And then all it's going to do, it's going to remove the couple of the properties that aren't needed anymore for this, it's going to update the API version. And this is needed because this is the one that can use template specs for deployment. Again, in this master file. Again, those link template specs don't change. It's this new uh, master one here. For example, if I go back into that here in that new file, it just, it's just going to update the API version for each of these resources here for this API version for the deployment task to 2019, which is the one that can use template specs. And then this just makes sure that all the JSON special characters are escaped, as all that code does. It just creates that new master file. It outputs it into the root of your code here. So like this root level here. And then we actually deploy it as a template spec. So that gets deployed as that template spec. So again, when we go here, you'll see that it's deployed as that template spec, right? And if we actually go into this again, it's just going to actually deploy all of your Instead of the ARM template link template zero, it's going to use a template spec zero and template spec one and so on. That's all it's going to do. And yeah, that's the main piece there. And then in this step, we just publish that new master template file. So you actually have the exact code that's used when you deploy it. So when you actually go to your artifacts, you're not going to be able to see this new artifact. That's going to have that new file that's been outputted for you. And all this is the exact same for deploy UAT and prod, right? Except in this deploy, the only other step here is this, instead of the ARM template deployment, we're now using going to deploy it via the linked template specs. So we're actually going to use uh, a CLI task. And then all we do is we grab whatever uh, subscription, this is the secret variables again for the subscription ID and prod subscription based on what environment you chose. And you reference the original video if you're curious on this. Um, and it's just going to retrieve the resource ID for that new V2 master ARM template spec file. And then it's just going to deploy it. So it's going to deploy that which again has little 50 template specs and just deploy it into that resource group. And that's it. And then optionally, I have way down here after you deploy to prod, you could move this wherever you want to, but I commented it out now, but if you actually want to delete all those template specs. So once you deploy your data factory and it successfully deploys to prod, you may not want to keep all of these there in your resource group. So if you want to delete all of these template specs that were just created, you can just uncomment this code just like this. And then that will actually delete all of the template specs. So what it does is it only will delete template specs. It won't delete any other resources except the actual template specs in that resource group. And then it will delete them for you. And that's it. That's all that's different in the code. And it does it, I think, pretty nicely for you. If we go back here and actually look at this, you'll see in this download ADF artifact and create template specs, we're going to just print out and say, hey, we're trying to create the template spec for zero, template spec zero. Yeah, create that new template spec zero for that linked ARM template. And then so on. It's going to create the master file, and that's it. It's going to publish that new master ARM template file to your art artifacts. And then in UAT, it's going to deploy. It's going to deploy using that linked templates. So again, it'll just say that, hey, it's trying to retrieve the resource ID for that, again, that new ARM template master file for that template spec. And then it deploys it. And then same thing with prod. And then if you see in a different pipeline here, I also have one where it option will delete. So it actually will go in and then delete all of those template specs in your resource group if you want to as well. And then if I go into my UAT data factory that it deployed, I have the thousand pipelines here, just like in the dev one. And then again, in prod, the thousand pipelines. And yeah, that's how that works. The last thing I wanted to show you is how can you actually deploy these thousand pipelines into your own data factory if you actually want to test out this link template approach. So if I go into my dev 
data factory here, where essentially these styles of pipelines are just a bunch of weight activities. So like example in this PL weight one is weight activities, which again, just gets you over that four megabyte size so you can test. Now, the actual code for this, to do this, to deploy this in your own environment, is in this uh, GitHub repository again, it's in this deploy resources folder, and it's these two files that you want to grab. So if I go into the code here, in that same piece when I clone this repository, I go to the deploy resources, this first one is that pipeline definition file. We're just going to deploy all of those weight activities, the linked weight activities in a particular pipeline. Okay. The second one here is a PowerShell script. Now, in order to actually run this, these are AZ CLI commands. You want to make sure you install the Azure CLI locally on your computer. So I'll link this in the description below of how to do that. It's really easy and quick. And then once you do that, then all you have to do is go into this PowerShell script, go into, this will actually deploy your dev, UAT, and prod resource groups. You can comment these out if you don't want to deploy those resource groups. Then you select a data factory name if you want to create a new one. And then your data factory definition pipeline file, which is going to be using this pipeline file here. Then the region you want to deploy everything to. So if you don't want to create the resource groups, you can comment this out. Otherwise, this will create the three resource groups for you. And then it will create a new data factory. And again, you can comment this out if you already have a data factory that already exists. And this piece is actually what does the work. So this is actually going to loop through and then dynamically change the PL weight activity name. So it's going to be PL weight one, PL weight two, PL weight yeah, up to a thousand, right? Uh, and then it's going to deploy a thousand pipelines of this particular pipeline file that I just showed you all those weight activities. So if you didn't want a thousand, if you only want 500, just simply change this to 500. So it's really easy to configure. Um, and then it actually just deploys that pipeline named whatever the dynamic name was here using that pipeline definition file. And that's it. And then if you want to clean up everything, uh, you can just uncomment this and delete delete all the resource groups and all the pipeline stuff and everything in those resource groups. And then what that looks like uh, here, it will actually deploy it to your live data factory. So if you have Git already set up, then you can just click on import resources to a, a branch. So to import those live pipelines to a particular branch, you can click on this. Or if you don't have it set up, when you set up a new one, there's actually going to be a checkbox that says import resources to the branch. And then you just check that box off and it'll import those as well. And yeah, that's it. I hope this is helpful. Please let me know if you have any questions or comments in the uh, video. Thanks so much for your time.